There are things in this world that sometimes feel like they go on forever. There are things that we fight for that matter, and there are sometimes things we fight for that doesn't. I just got done watching the Snyder Cut, and that was a question I was asking myself before going in. Not to say that it was going to be bad or that it was going to be terrible, that I was going to hate it or anything, but when you think about the world and where we find ourselves, and when you think about just everything in general, is fighting for the release of a four-hour movie something that we should do? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. And I say that not just because of my own entertainment, not just because of what I personally want to see or necessarily for wanting Zach's vision to be brought to light, to scene, to the end, come to fruition, whatever terminology you want to use. But for everyone out there who has looked to hope and held on to this for hope, it's been three and a half years almost since the release of Justice League. Four years, almost, since Zack Snyder left the project. And here we are, with a four-hour and two-minute movie that is similar to what we got back in 2017. I think that's a fair thing to say, but it is better in every conceivable fashion. What we got back in 2017 was an absolute Frankenstein project. And what we have in 2021, for better or for worse, is a project that is, well, I should say at least is complete. A beginning, a middle, an end, an epilogue, six total chapters, a ton of cool shit, and just a great experience to behold. I know I might sound a bit somber coming into this whole thing, but it's reflective in nature the Snyder Cut is very reflective in nature because you know I think back to where I was when I first heard of it I think back to my very first video on it which was November 24th 2017 is when I first reported on the Snyder Cut and I always believed in it even if I didn't necessarily think we were ever going to see it It's one of those things I'm glad to be wrong on, you know, but I'm not going to lie. I think, uh, part of me was a little afraid going in, if I'm being honest with you. And I say that because while this, I don't know if this is the end, to be honest with you, if, if there's ever going to be more. I don't know that. I don't know if we're ever going to get more out of it. I don't know if we're ever going to see these characters again. And it's it's kind of bittersweet, you know. There's a sadness that, that kind of comes when you think of it from that perspective. And it might just be that it's also nearly 4 o'clock in the morning and I'm absolutely effing exhausted. But for four years, people, you know, three years, really... We fought for what could be. We wanted to see what could be. And now it's here. Now it's here. It, <laughs> it is a monster of a movie. It's an absolute insane monster of a movie. And one that I feel will only get better with age. The more you watch it, the more little things you'll find. My gripes with it, if anything, were just petty. Most of it was just the overindulgence of slow-mo, but for crying out loud, this is Zack Snyder we're talking about here. You know, it's one of the aesthetics he come to love. But what I really enjoyed about this movie was that it gave us time with these characters. It gave us time to breathe with them, to grow with them, to care for them legitimately. The Joss Whedon version of the movie was a hard two-hour limit. This thing is double that in length. And you just get so much more out of it. 
you get a much more cohesive and complete plot. One that isn't jerry-rigged by two completely tonally different directors and a studio that just wanted to push out the movie in order to get profits instead of actually waiting till it was done. And it's weird to think that 10 months ago it was announced. After years of fighting, 10 months ago it was announced and here we are today (laughs) with it being right there on HBO Max. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Now, let me tell you about the things I liked. Pretty much everything. Uh, I found myself not feeling the four hours once I was able to sit down and actually watch it without any distractions. It felt like everything that happened today was trying to keep me from watching the movie, but I finally got to watch it. But I was really waiting for is the epilogue. The ending, the cliffhanger that we heard about. I had already essentially seen the movie in 2017. Like I said, it's for the most part the same story. This just had a bunch of different stuff in it and told it differently and better. And that last hour just absolutely kicks ass. But when you get to the end and we finally get to that nightmare sequence and we finally get a setup for what's to come. It just, man, it was good. Gave me chills. I had a smile on my face the whole time. Loved the interaction between Joker and Batman and what was going to be happening in that nightmare sequence and what was potentially going to come when Darkseid eventually does invade Earth. And it's amazing that with the 70 million that Zach got to finish this movie, he chose to shoot the nightmare scene as the five minutes or so of additional footage. That to me was crazy. Like almost like he was establishing a cliffhanger, a post credit tease for a stinger, you know, for a movie that may never come. And I think that is probably the most bittersweet part of it. However weird that is to say out loud. That the bittersweet nature of it for me is realizing that we may not see these characters again. And, you know, I want to equate it to uh, X-Men Dark Phoenix. And I'm not, no, trust me, this is way better than X-Men Dark Phoenix. But at the end of X-Men Dark Phoenix, Charles Xavier and Magneto sit down in Paris to play a game of chess. And when I saw Dark Phoenix in the theater, at that moment, I knew what I was watching was the last time these two characters would be on screen together again. And my initial thought was like, no, 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 no. I don't want it to be over. That's essentially what I what, what I was getting to. And in this case, I don't want it to be over either. In this case, I I I want it to continue. I want it a, a lot to continue. I think it was great. I mean, I don't know how we went from this to to Justice League and to even Wonder Woman 84. The world Zach created with his three films established a great groundling, you know, grounding for these characters. I mean, arguably, there's a different tonal style for Aquaman, and I love Aquaman all the same. But it's definitely going to be fascinating to see what comes out of this. Will Jason Kilar and HBO Max, Warner Media, bypass Warner Brothers, bypass Toby Emmerich specifically, and Walter Hamada? And put together a movie or a series that's going to keep this going forward. I mean, a news, a story broke tonight that apparently Zack Snyder and Jared Leto are developing a Joker solo film. I don't know how true that is. But after seeing the Joker back, Jared Leto back, I was very excited to see what they could do with this. 
because I really like Jared Leto as the Joker. I really like Ben Affleck as the Batman. And I really want to see those two interact some more. I would love to see something that would take us into that that whole thing, but longer. Maybe one day we'll get there. You know, we waited. <laughs> we waited three years to get this. You know, I, I think eventually we might get there. People might have to wait a little bit longer. I don't know. But I mean, like the the cinematography was strictly Zack Snyder. The the music was absolutely Junkie XL. The themes were all there. The performances were there. The world building was there. Yeah, there was a couple things with the CG that didn't always kind of work. And you could tell there were some issues, especially in the opening of the movie with Lex Luthor in the water. It just I mean, come on. That was pretty that's like the worst, the worst offender. But yeah, it was a hell of an experience, one that I can't wait to watch again. And it's rare for me at this point in time in my life to sit down and go, I really want to watch a four hour movie again. But it's not just that I want to like establish, you know, I want to sit down one day and I want to watch, you know, the two and a half hour Man of Steel, the three hour Batman v Superman and the four hour Snyder Cut. We're talking nearly 10 hours of DC Comics goodness from one director, one vision. And that's amazing. And I, I, I hope we get to see more. Anyway, look, I, this is more of a stream of conscious. This is more of just me kind of putting my thoughts out there. It's a quick thoughts, kind of. I'll do a, uh, a spoiler discussion with some friends probably on Friday. Um, I still can't live stream because of the two copyright strikes from Warner Brothers, but I hope that with the movies released now, they'll rescind those so I can live stream again. But uh, be sure to follow me on social media uh, at mjarbo on Twitter. You could just, you know, pay attention to the community board here on YouTube. And I'll talk to you guys later. Have yourself a great day. Thank you again. Thank you to Zach Snyder, Deborah Snyder, the Snyder family. And remember, for autumn.